Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. Now, the homeless population in Key West is astounding. The streets are speckled with people from all walks of life who have found themselves living on the streets, living in vehicles, living in mangroves, or other inappropriate places for one reason or another. Now, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into this subject this morning with a man who probably knows the subject best. The reason why is because he found himself homeless in Key West. Sloan, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Well, thank you for having me on. Sloan, I just shared with our viewers that you lived on the streets of Key West for a number of years. What they don't know is that you have two law degrees, you had practiced law for 12 years, you had written several books. So how in the world did you find yourself homeless? Well, the short answer is I ran out of money, which is how most people end up homeless. A little longer, maybe a more interesting uh, explanation is, I, as I told you once I was, uh, some year, many years ago now, I was apprehended by angels. And everything changed after that. And one of the things they had me do uh, in early 2000 was leave the U.S. and travel around the world. And I visited different countries. And all basically I had was credit cards. And when I finally got back into the States uh, on Maui, the credit card companies cut me off. And so I was on the street on Maui. And that, I was traveling with a woman, too, and uh, we was pooled our credit cards. And she also had been apprehended. And uh, anyway, I, we knew we were going to park. And I woke up one morning. Uh, by then we'd been taken in by family. Had an inn and she was cleaning rooms. I was mowing the grass and rebuilding their good vegetable garden. And that was how we traded off. And uh, it was a lovely place over Makawa, below Makawa above Paia. And I, uh, I heard one morning, go to Big Pine Key. And I'd heard that some years before. And I had come down here when I had a good bit of money. And had spent two weeks down here and had come back another time. And so I said, well, I, I like Big Pine Key, but I have no money. So in three days' time, I was in the air headed to Los Angeles. And I had a friend there who was part of the exit plan. Turned out to be, I got an email from him out of the blue. and heard from him for months. Next thing I know, all these arrangements are being made. And I'm going to see him in Los Angeles. I stayed with him and his family for maybe a week. And uh, they gave me bus fare and uh, about $75 and took me to the Greyhound bus station in Los Angeles. And here I'm going uh, to, I think, Big Pine Key, but the ticket's to Key West. Uh, I'm familiar with the Keys. My father had a home in the Keys for 40 years. Now, Marotta. I've been down here a lot, and sometimes to Key West. And uh, so, when the bus gets to Big Pine Key, you know, the, I'm getting these these messages, you know, go on down to Key West. And so, I ended up in Key West with about about fifty dollars left, and I spent the first night uh, on the sidewalk uh, next to the Pegasus. And uh, and then I moved over one block, and there was some by the bookstore on Fleming. There were deeper places where you could sleep. And then I went to the Unity Uni, Unity Church, and I talked to the minister, and she let me stay in their back room, back behind the church. And I had something going with her of a, of a spiritual nature. I mean, it was like we were talking about things that normally she would not talk to other people about. And so she offered me shelter, and I was staying back there. Then they, they did their AA meetings back there, or their 12-step meetings, people that were in recovery. And I didn't know that. And I was in there sleeping one night, and they came in and found me. They started giving her a hard time. I told her what happened. She said, well, just come in later. And finally, they got rid of her, but not because of me. They, 
But I told them they shouldn't get rid of her because I was getting all these vibes. She was supposed to be their minister. This kind of stuff happened. It's been happening to me for years. <laughs> and so anyway, for for months, I was living in somebody's vehicle. I was sleeping in that doorway on Fleming. Uh, and then uh, that went on to April. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I had a dream and something happened. And I was a friend of mine who I'd met who was a Gazo, the street performance was the magic act down there with all the cantaloupes mm -hmm. and the... I know what you're talking you about. Know, mm -hmm. We had become good friends and, and he was leaving and so I said, I'm going with you, I think. And the dream told me to go and he ended up spending the summer in hell in Georgia. And, uh, and his street performer friend up there took me in, gave me a tent and, and he said, I have an idea for a novel, you want to hear it? And I said, sure. He told me, I said, heck, I lived half of it last year already. And so I wrote the novel all summer while I was living in a tent on this place on a library computer in Helen. I'm back down here just a few days after 9-11. I go back to the same doorway. The cops come by and run me out. I say, what's going on? I slept here for months. Can't let you sleep in that doorway. It took me weeks to realize 9-11, it changed everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense. That does yeah, make sense. Yeah, but they couldn't get back at the at the terrorists, so homeless people become the terrorists mm -hmm. in Key West. Now, and this is before, you know, the big slump, the big crash, mm -hmm. before, you know, the economic crash and all these new homeless people showed up. All they had was people that had been on the street a good while, you know, and you saw them on Duval Street, laying on the street drunk, or sleeping anywhere. And there's a long time, this was in 2001, mm -hmm. but I got here in early 2000. I was eating every meal in the soup kitchen over at St. Mary's Church, and then the, then they moved it out eventually to Flagler. I ate hundreds of meals in that soup kitchen. Mm -hmm. I slept on Hicks Beach uh, in front of the Martello. I slept on, on the, under the pavilions. I slept in the back yard of that church without them knowing I was there mm -hmm. over the years. I slept on uh, White Street Pier at night. And then finally closed, closed it at night so homeless people couldn't sleep out there, meaning nobody could go out there and fish anymore or party or do what they did. You know, they had street dances out there. All these things at night, just to keep the homeless people from going out there and sleeping. They did. They took that away from everybody in Key West. Now, Sloan, I want to know though how you were able to overcome the challenge of having depression during all of this. I didn't have depression. You didn't have depression. I've had depression. I know depression. I was not depressed during this. Living was, on the streets that it, didn't it, depress it you. Ord no, depression is something else altogether. Okay, that is something that takes you over. And I've, I've had it happen in Dark Nights of the Soul, which was part of the process. This is something else entirely. It is just an ordeal being homeless. But that is not depression. At least it was not for me. Mm -hmm. I did not like it. Okay? And I was having, the whole time, I'm, I, you know, every night I'm dreaming about what I'm involved in. Mm -hmm. I was involved in stuff all the time. But it was from the, from the basement. You know, and I guess it was the way that... He just wanted me to learn about Key West, because mm -hmm. uh, you learn a lot when you're down in the basement that you will not learn if you're not. Absolutely. Now, Sloan, and you did you did overcome your homelessness. We're going to take a quick I, break you didn't right ask now. Me how I overcame it. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you okay. how you overcame it. We're going to take a quick <laughs> break right now. But when we return from these messages, we will talk more about this. Stay with us.